is Bitcoin. It's going up forever, Mom. You're against Bitcoin, you're against freedom. Welcome to another episode of Simply Bitcoin Live. We're your number one source for the peaceful Bitcoin revolution, code breaking news, culture, matter warfare. We'll be your guide through the separation of money and state. Opti is telling me the wrong mic. I don't know why Restream keeps doing this. Holy crap. Talk about, you know, I think a question that a lot of us ask, which is how much Bitcoin do you need to retire? And when is that date going to arrive? And a buddy of ours actually came up with this software or this like, I don't know what you call this program. And it's called One Moon. And essentially what you do is you plug in the amount of Bitcoin you own, the you're of course you're speculating what you what your what the speculative return is going to be over, you know, uh, compounding over the next couple of years. And then you put in the inflation rate, right? And then that calculate gives you a calculation and then you'll kind of have a rough idea of when it is you'll be able to retire, live off your Bitcoin with a certain amount of income. So we're gonna go through all that today, and then we're gonna go through a bunch of different data sources, different things that I think you'll find interesting. We've done a couple episodes on this topic before, and it seems like you guys have enjoyed it. So we're gonna give you guys what the people want. Um, and other news also, I don't know if Opti has talked about this. I've been out uh, the last couple of days. Uh, I'm a f it's kind of strange, uh, but it's awesome. It's a blessing. And uh, shout out to Opti for holding it down. But we're also going to talk about the Satoshi emails. So a lot of emails were uncovered because of the lawsuit Craig Rice versus Copa. And uh, it seems like Adam Back and, you know, a lot of these Bitcoin OGs, uh, showed a lot of their early correspondence with uh with satoshi uh to prove that you know craig wright is not satoshi so but i want to hit it differently because a lot of people were covering about the emails and you know they're, they're, think about it right satoshi is this mythological figure we everyone has explored every single piece of communication of Satoshi, and it's been a very long time since we've seen new correspondence, right? And then because we're seeing new correspondence, all of a sudden you see a little bit more of his personality. You see a little bit more, or her personality. You see a little bit more of, of the person behind, behind Satoshi Nakamoto. But what I gotta say is that one of the best things that Satoshi did other than create Bitcoin, of course, was disappear. If Satoshi didn't disappear, I would think that would be a net negative for the movement. And if you compare and contrast that with every other, you know, cryptocurrency, the founder usually sticks around. But the fact that Satoshi disappeared, the fact that Satoshi created one of the most powerful, not only, you know, movements, technology, whatever you want to call it, and he had the humility to walk away from it and leave it to its own devices. I think it's a big effing deal and I think it's way better that way. And it, and it reminds me of, you know, one of the most important things that George Washington did here in the US was he stepped away from the presidency after two terms, even though he would have been reelected again. And then that set kind of an example because he didn't want to be a king, right? You know, created this, nation and he stepped away from it right so T satoshi created this beautiful technology that we're all benefiting from that the world is going to benefit from that the wall that wall street is starting to get a taste of and can't resist it and he stepped away so i don't want satoshi to come back i don't think he's going to come back and most importantly it's not important who satoshi is it's important what satoshi did what he created but Bitcoin is much bigger than every, than any one person, right? You know, the saying, we are all Satoshi. I truly believe that. Anyways, it's going to be a great show. Uh, we got uh, Opti in the hot. I'm in 4K smiling. 
Uh, so it's going to be a great show when Opti and he's he's wearing like Dolce Gabbana, you know. No, uh, no, 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 no. This is just a flannel, guys. This is it's, nice. It's this flannel. Is a nice flannel. Opti's like flexing. I'm wearing the Bitcoin Well shirt today. Uh, oh, where's my merch at? Now, uh, also, before I go on, guys, forgive the video and the green screen. I don't know what's going on with the restream. It was working perfectly the last couple of days, but I just popped on and it's acting really weird on me today. So maybe I need to update my browser. Everyone's been telling me to update my browser. But uh, yeah, man, here we are. Nico, we're back. We're back. <laughs> we're back. We're back. We're back. And anyways, and of, anyways, I'll go. Yeah. And of course, we have. Nate uh, from Voltage, who is going to be joining us today. He's going to talk to us about what Voltage is. And I got a lot of questions for him about the Lightning Network because, uh, like, you know, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I mean, and uh, Ben the Carman wrote about this the other day. I'm sure you read it, uh, Nate, which is um, essentially like, dude, like, Lightning is not that great right now. Like it's it's just it's not that great, and uh, it needs a lot of work. And I know Voltage is at the forefront of that right now, and you guys are trying to fix that. So it seems like Restream is fucking with Nate too. Uh, Opti, dude, they must be working on something on the back end. All right, so hopefully we get Nate in here. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll do some troubleshooting live. He, we were literally just talking to him, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. He's popping back in. We're doing it live. Re yeah, Restream's acting up. Nate, are you there? Can you hear us? Yeah, I heard everything until uh, you like pulled me in, and then all the sound died, and I couldn't hear anything. Okay, yeah, right, well, guys. So, so it is we're restream. Back. It What's is up? restream. It is restream. <laughs> we're stro we're rolling with the punches. Anyways, Nate, what I was basically saying yep, is that uh, Lightning is is in a rough state right now. It's not easy to use. Uh, is it, dude? Nate's gonna Nate's gonna counter it. All right, Nate. Before you so. show up, I hope so. Yeah, N but he's Nico, in the belly of the Nico's beast, man. Uh... He's he, 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 you're working right now. You're working for one of the companies that's trying to solve this problem and make uh, lightning easy for institutions, for enterprises, for retail. So you know you're at the, you're at the forefront of this. But I gotta say, like right now. If you want to have a plug and play solution, it is not easy, right? There was the wallet mm. of Satoshi in the U S they pulled out for regulatory reasons, but you know, I, I went, I jumped through the hoops the other day. I had to like get invited to all be, uh, then, you know, I had to yeah. plug that in with my Zeus wallet. And then it took me about an hour, an hour or so to figure it out. And I have it figured out now it works great, but it wasn't as easy as just downloading an app. Right. And I, I don't think we're going to get this mass adoption of lightning until we get to a point where it's as easy as downloading an app, you know, so um, maybe you disagree, uh, but you work at what voltage, man. So you guys are trying to figure this out. What's your take before we jump into the show? Uh, no, I think what you said is extremely uh, valid and true. We are having, um, as you said, the Wallace Satoshi uh, issue where folks were these wallets that hold your funds for you but allow you to use lightning are starting to get spooked by regulatory things and pulling out of certain jurisdictions and stuff so that leaves us with um as an end user of lightning what is the easiest way i can download an app on my phone and start using it and folks have tried out these self-custodial solutions phoenix is one of them uh, zeus has an embedded node now um, but they're also encountering uh, hiccups with that in that it because you're getting a channel, it costs an on-chain transaction and on-chain fees have been really high so far this year. They've come down a little bit, but you don't want to spend $10 to, to pay $10. You know what I mean? So uh, that's that's really rough. Um, one of the other things that are that is coming out in that category is is the cashew stuff, uh, specifically the eNuts wallet which is phenomenal. And I highly recommend you try out eNuts if anyone, uh, you know, e wants to, find. it's called eNuts because it uses the cashew uh, mint uh, protocol. So you basically join a mint, but you can pay invoices and stuff. It's interesting. Just give it a shot. You'll love it. Um, but the, what we're trying to fix, not really fix what voltage is trying to solve. And I think what lightning in general is sort of pivoting to try to solve is how do we interconnect institutions together where instead of being um, strictly focused on just making micropayments or buying a coffee or whatever, how do we connect 
the globe together, the institutions together. So it's possible that the Lightning Network won't always be or at the end of the day won't be sort of I'm paying you five bucks for a slice of pizza. It'll be institutions settling with each other globally, um, you know, um, every hour, every day something like that. So it's possible that the Lightning Network is going to become sort of a mesh network that connects these institutions together. And then maybe something like a Fediment uh, like that will be more of what the end user uses in the future. And I mean, in the future, I mean, decades in the future. That's my personal opinion. um, Because in my opinion, I think on-chain fees are still low. We just hit below 10 sats per vbyte recently. So we're not at that point yet where we need to uh, scale that out, but the Fediment protocol is extremely, extremely exciting and extremely, extremely active in development. So I think that uh, these problems are known, and s- people smarter than me are working on solutions for those. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, some people the chat's going wild. Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, man, I'm excited. Nuts. I'm excited to, uh, to. They're commenting on the beard, bro. You, they're saying you look very Amish today. I'm excited to uh, jump I'll into I'll this. take it, man. I love beard life. <laughs> I'm excited to jump into this conversation, hear more about it. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, no more delay. Let's jump straight into the show. We got a lot to talk about today. Let's check it out. Here we go. The big Before we have to give a shout out to our flagship sponsor. Guys, you have to check out Bitcoin. Well, uh, it is the best place to buy Bitcoin, in my opinion. It is self-custody by default. That's right. If you buy Bitcoin on Bitcoin Well, you have to take self-custody, which furthers the peaceful Bitcoin revolution. They currently have the Bitcoin jackpot contest. Uh, if you enter into the contest, you have an opportunity to win over one point. You have 1.5 million sats is currently in the jackpot. And also the opportunity to win a uh, hardware, a foundation devices, a uh, passport hardware wallet. But you got to enter in before Friday. So head over to BitcoinWell.com. The sign up is incredibly easy. It's a publicly traded company based out of Canada. They recently just expanded to the United States. And it's the first on-ramp in the United States that is self-custody by default. And that furthers the Bitcoin revolution. Remember, the revolution is not possible if individuals are not taking and self taking self-custody. So we need more individuals taking self-custody. So we have to promote uh, platforms and on ramps that are pushing self custody, and what better than a on ramp that pushes self custody by default? All right, everybody, let's get to the numbers. We have a lot to talk about today. Let's check it out. Here we go. The Bitcoin numbers. Is your Bitcoin in cold storage really secure? Is your seed phrase really secure? Stamp Seeds Do It Yourself Kit has everything you need to hammer your seed words into commercial grade titanium plates instead of just writing them on paper. Don't store your generational wealth on paper. Paper is prone to water damage, fire damage. You want to put your generational wealth on one of the strongest metals on planet Earth, titanium. Your words are actually stamped into this metal plate with this hammer and these letter stamps. And once your words are in, they aren't going anywhere. No risk of the plate breaking apart and pieces falling everywhere. Titanium stamped seeds will survive nearly triple the heat produced by a house fire. They're also crush proof, waterproof, non-corrosive, and time proof. All things that paper is not allowing you to huddle your Bitcoin with peace of mind for the long haul. Stamp your seed on Stamp Seed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I made it incredibly easy for you guys. You can scan the QR code on your screen right now. It'll take you directly to the Stamp Seed website where you can get yourself a titanium uh, Bitcoin seed phrase storage kit. Don't store your generational wealth on paper. Store it on titanium. Get yourself a stamp seed kit. And you could use promo code simply to get 15% off anything on their website. Also, guys, if you're enjoying the show, it really helps with the YouTube algos if you smash that like button. So if you're enjoying the show and you're watching us on YouTube, smash that like button. If you're watching us on Rumble, on Twitter, any the platform of your choice, smash the like button. Help us push the orange signal forward. At the time of recording, the Bitcoin price is 56900 Sats per dollar, 1757 Block height, 832286 
blocks to having 7,714, having estimate April 19, 2024, total Lightning Network capacity 4,581 Bitcoin capacity value 260 million US dollars, realized monetary inflation 1.74%, the market capitalization of Bitcoin 1.12% trillion us dollars bitcoin versus gold market cap 8.1 percent continuing to crawl up looks like we are in a very very good uh position ladies and gentlemen bitcoin continues to moon quick update on the etfs the fidelity etf is almost it's close to breaking nine a uh, hundred thousand bitcoin the blackrock etf is at 132 thousand bitcoin the the arc invest etf is at 33,000 bitcoin so it seems like everything is uh is popping out and it seems like you know there's leaders in the pack so it seems like kathy wood fidelity and blackrock seems to be the ones that are winning out of all the etfs uh but this is pretty crazy man it seems like the Vanek, yeah, this is crazy. Wall Street can't get enough of it. Wall Street is addicted. And, uh, of course, Bitcoin's incentives stay winning. Anyways, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, the Satoshi emails. Uh, there was a big drop, like I said, due to the lawsuit. Adam Back, uh, you know, uh, unveiled a lot of these emails. Uh, here's Pete Ruzzo. Does an incredible job, works at Bitcoin Magazine. And I know he he's the editor at large at Kraken. Uh, and he, you know, in this thread, he he shows a lot of the various emails. So first, new Adam Back's complete email history with Satoshi Nakamoto was entered in the court records today. Email number one, Adam and Satoshi discuss Bitcoin four months before its official launch. Adam's reply here is Adam suggested that it, Satoshi investigate a paper called B Money by Wei Dai. Dai was a well-known uh, cryptography on digital cash and is a frequently cited candidate for satoshi satoshi thanks adam here they discuss the b money idea and we can see satoshi admitting he had never read the paper email number four adam still hasn't read the white paper a day a day after first emailing satoshi adam writes back apologizing for for not reading the paper he then directs satoshi to another paper called micro mint i've never heard this paper discussed the final email, Satoshi thanks Adam again and lets him know about Bitcoin's formal software release. According to Adam's public statements, he, would, he wouldn't he would look at Bitcoin again until late 2012. Yeah, that's crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. So you guys could go check this out. Uh, you could check it out on Pete Ruzzo's, uh, you know, Pete Ruzzo's uh, Twitter account. But I, I do want to focus on something. Here's NVK. I think he says it best. Uh, Satoshi designed Bitcoin so that he or anyone independently wouldn't matter. Satoshi didn't want to be sanctified or worshipped. Satoshi didn't want to be known. Satoshi faded away. Respect his wishes. Uh, and here's Jack Mahler's basically saying, you know, same thing, something very similar. I completely agree, by the way. Who Satoshi is, isn't important. What Satoshi did is extremely important. And I believe that the moment that he is unveiled, like if, if Satoshi's identity is discovered, I think it would be more harmful for Bitcoin. I like the fact that Bitcoin has this kind of mythological, uh, you know, backstory uh, because it, as long as there's no single human being connected to the start of this movement, there is no metaphorical head to chop off. Right. There is no one to go after. Every human is flawed. Right. Every single one of us. And I'm sure that, that Satoshi or the group of people that are Satoshi or that were Satoshi, they're human beings. So therefore they had flaws. But what we have to look past and what we have to look back at as Bitcoiners or, you know, historians will look back at is a couple emails, a couple posts on Bitcoin forum and most importantly, his proof of work. But the human element is removed altogether. Right. So I like that. I think it's a positive. I think it's a it's a good thing. And he created it so that it could basically run itself. And so and Bitcoin has been doing that way longer than when Bit than Satoshi was back in the picture. So here's Jack Mahler's and Jack Mahler says Jack Mahler's calls for Bitcoiners to stop speculation around the identity of Satoshi. Let's check it out. Uh, I'm pretty pissed off. Um, and I mean, just kind of a little disheartened by the Bitcoin community to be totally candid. Um, you guys got to stop speculating on who Satoshi is. You got to stop that shit. It's so fiat of you. It's childish. It's <laughs> fucked. 
it's it is i mean it's it's so fiat you sound like a bunch of frat brothers um trying to social climb up the curve um you got to cut that shit out it's so childish it's also extremely fucking dangerous um it's extremely dangerous i know my parents have had the pleasure of getting to meet uh fran finney hal's wife and um it is terrifying the amount of shit that she's had to go through even before this it is so dangerous to put someone in that position to be the creator of bitcoin and potentially the world's first trillionaire and then on top of that just the disrespect to the guy or girl or they group whatever that clearly only wanted one thing they only wanted to be anonymous clearly when did satoshi nakamoto ever ever ask for anything else from us right bitcoin was a gift to enrich humanity and shit coins are to enrich a small group of people right that's the whole thing if this was a shit coin and it was you guys want to go smear and attack vitalik now, i'm never really for destruction of another human but if someone's launching something to enrich themselves and you think they're being malicious or deceiving that's that's a totally different ball game this person gifted humanity with something and everyone listening to this podcast probably gained an immense benefit from it and the one fucking thing that they wanted is to just be left alone and just be left anonymous and none of us have bulletproof evidence. And so all you're doing is disrespecting this person that gifted us something so incredible. You're endangering other people and you're acting like fucking fiat. I mean, Jack Mahler's went off a lot harder than I did. But yes, like it's not important. It's not important. And I, I agree with, with the statement. It's dangerous not only to the individual. By the way, I, I don't think we'll ever find out. I mean... We all have our ideas, but I don't think we'll ever find out like concrete fact who Satoshi is. I don't think it's important who Satoshi is. Pay attention to his proof of work. His proof of work is here. We're all benefiting from it. And there is one thing that Jack said that's sauce. It's just signal, which is the idea that he said. If Satoshi wanted to benefit just himself. He would have done what all the other altcoin founders did, which is they stayed in the picture. They stayed in the limelight. They got the fame. Satoshi didn't do that. He disappeared. He walked away. In fact, his coins don't move. Right? So I think that's a testament of what he wanted. This is a gift. Let's take advantage of it. We don't need to know who he is, and it's not important that we know who he is. It's cool looking at the emails, and it's like, you know, it's, it's fascinating if you're a Bitcoiner, but at the same time, you know, keep your eye on the prize. Uh, and like Jack Mahler said, uh, stop being fiat, bro. Anyways, Opti, what's your take on this? And move on to Nate. Yeah, so sorry, guys. My cameras, it, this restream is acting up really bad today for me. I don't know what's going on. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, when I saw that Jack Mahler's pick or that video, I, I totally agree. Like, you know, I know people like to speculate on who Satoshi is, but personally, like, I don't care. I don't want to know. I don't think we should want to know. I, I just think like, you know, Jack Mahler's nailed it on the head when he's like, look, the only thing Satoshi ever asked from us is like, I'm in a non. Don't try to find me. I gave you this. Let it ride. And even to that point, I think, you know, Satoshi left what the Bitcoin project at like 2010, you know, we've, we've been, a we've had no Satoshi in the picture longer than we actually had Satoshi in the picture. And at this point, guys, like, I don't think we should speculate, but on that point, I think it is very interesting how the normies out there, like that's still a common FUD line for them. It's like, oh, well, we don't know who this guy is. Like maybe he's, you know, NSA or whatever, like maybe he's a bad guy. And it's like, it doesn't matter. At this point, he is no longer a part of the project. He's left the project a long time ago. And it doesn't really matter who he is. Like at, at the very end of the day, let's just let Satoshi ride off into the sunset. He gave humanity the best technology ever. And like, let's just let him be an on. And so it is very interesting. Of course, we're in a new wave now where new people are going to come in and the, they're all going to do the same thing where they're going to try to find out who Satoshi is. They're going to speculate on who Satoshi is. And personally, I just don't care. OK, I guess I got to take off my camera. Uh, I, I don't really care. I am just, I, I think Bitcoin is, it's bigger than just Satoshi and, and here we are. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy to just, just 
not know who Satoshi is and, and be okay with his invention and let it ride and all of us have our lives benefited with Bitcoin. 100%. Nate, so what's your take on what uh, what Mahler's is saying? <laughs> Uh, you know, I wish I could be a contrarian on this, but I am totally aligned with everybody. And I listened to the entire show on Mahler's uh, pod. What's it called? The Money Matters pod, right? Which is which is good. And uh, yeah, I totally agree with him. And like what happened to like Dorian and stuff was completely ridiculous. And thankfully, that wasn't really a Bitcoiner that did that. It was the mainstream media that was trying to, you know, find a scoop or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think that... Um, a lot of the folks who are looking to find out who Satoshi is um, are succumbing to the human psychology of trying to find a human leader. And I think that's like a bad programming. Like it, it <laughs> like obviously humans thousands of years ago needed leaders, tribes, etc. But like, it's really, really important to um, embrace ideas more than embracing people in my opinion. So like, let's just celebrate Satoshi's idea. And like you said, let him right off in the sunset. And that's really all I have to say about that. I don't find, um, I don't find folks that are speculating, um, on the identity and stuff. Um, interesting. And like, like Jack said, I don't really find it very, um, palatable or, or good either. So let's, let's just stop that. Let's just be happy and, and let Satoshi wherever he is, just do his thing. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I, I completely agree with that statement. And, uh, you know, this just keep, just stay in, keep your head in the game, guys. It doesn't matter. You know, but Mahler said it best. It's fiat, fiat thinking. Anyways, I do want to give a shout out before we head on to the news. We have a lot to talk about today. How much Bitcoin does it take to retire? Guys, check out bitcoinwell.com. It is the self-custody platform by default. It is our flagship sponsor. Go to bitcoinwell.com. And also they have the Bitcoin jackpot contest, which is now live. You could enter into the contest and you have an opportunity to win 1.5 million sats is the current jackpot and if you enter in before friday uh you have the chance to win a passport hardware wallet so go to bitcoinwell.com and if you're interested in the contest go to bitcoinwell.com slash app slash reward dash points and uh you can find out more info there all right everybody no more delay let's jump straight into the news we have a lot to talk about today let's check it out here we go the daily news I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Foundation Devices. It's self-custody done right. They built a premium grade hardware wallet called Passport right here in the US. It's fully open source and verifiable. It's the most intuitive Bitcoin wallet designed with a UX reminiscent of a simple feature phone. So you will know how to navigate it and use it the moment you pick it up. Get your Bitcoin off exchanges and into your into your own hands in just a few minutes. Experience the peace of mind that comes with taking ownership of your own keys. After a massive sellout during Bitcoin Miami 2023, the passport is back in stock at foundationdevices.com. Bitcoin only, open source verifiable, completely air gap security model, gorgeous design craft, premium grade materials. If you're thinking about getting your Bitcoin off exchanges, this is the one for you. Check out the passport link in the show notes below to learn more. I always made it incredibly easy for you guys. You could scan the QR code on your screen. It will take you directly to the Foundation Devices website. Where you can get yourself a passport hardware wallet. Remember, guys, not your keys, not your cheese. It's completely open source. It's absolutely beautiful. The design. Uh, definitely want to get yourself a hardware wallet and put your sweet, sweet Satoshis in cold storage. All right, everybody, let's get uh today's topic which is how much bitcoin do you need to retire right that's the question i know a lot of people don't like to work you know you'd rather spend more time with your with your family but of course you have to make ends meet you have to put food on the table for your family you know your people depend on you so that's the big question so first of all we have to break down the two types of thinking all right there's inflationary mindset which is the fiat mindset, the fiat operating system. And then there's the Bitcoin operating system, the deflationary mindset, two totally different ways of thinking about things. 
on an inflationary mindset or the fiat operating system, you constantly have to work harder and harder and harder to earn more money because the money that you're earning is constantly uh, losing purchasing power. In Bitcoin, you can work as your money, the money that you earn, your savings actually increase in purchasing power over time. And that changes your mentality. It changes the way that you look at the world, right? How does it change it? Well, all of a sudden, if your savings start to increase in purchasing power over time and life gets significantly cheaper for you, all of a sudden you have a long term way of thinking of th thinking at things, uh, thinking of things. Why? Because everything that you would consider purchasing could is actually might cost you more in the future. Right. In the sense that if I spend this 0 0.01 Bitcoin on this new phone or something, Opti's back, um, that new phone uh, might cost you a lot of money later. Right. There's that those famous charts of, you know, uh, the or the famous example, better said, of the person who bought a two Papa John's pizzas for uh, for 10,000 Bitcoin. You look back and you're like, holy crap. And this is what I'm talking about. When your money increases in purchasing power over time, you know, you're going to start to think about what you should purchase and what you shouldn't purchase. But anyways, so I asked Google, I said, how much, you know, like what would be, you know, like what would be the target? What, 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 where would you want to get to if, uh, you know, if you wanted to retire? And uh, Google responded with, assuming an annual inflation rate of 4% and a conservative after-tax rate return of 5%, you should aim for a savings target of $1.3 million to a fund a 30-year retirement that begins at age 67. This would give you an investment portfolio that produces about $50,000 a year in income. Right? So that's, you know, the fiat way of thinking, right, you know, work from, you know, the age of 18 all the way to 67, like, you know, just work, 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 and, uh, you know, get to that 1.3 million. Now will give you 30 years of, of income taking 50,000 out a year. If you take a look at the different states, every state has a different cost of living. Of course, you know, you could be living very well, or you can be living below your means. Uh, but I took the average here. So the average cost of living in the state of Hawaii is 55,000 in Massachusetts is 53,000 in California, 53,000, New York, 49,000, New Jersey, 49,000, Alaska, 48,000, Maryland, 48,000, Washington, 47,000, Oregon, 46,000, but it's roughly 50,000, right? Um, so this brings me to this great tool, uh, that was, developed by Jimbo. He's, he's awesome Bitcoiner on Bitcoin Twitter and it's called when moon and it's very simple. Given my Bitcoin stack, when can I retire? Right? So it breaks it down for you. So what is your Bitcoin stack? Let's get to one Bitcoin, right? Cause you know, you got to get to one Bitcoin. If you're a newcomer, if you're tuning into simply Bitcoin for the first time, if you're not class of 2017, 2016, you're not class of, you know, of, uh, 2020 2021 uh that's just this one bitcoin right we'll, we'll we'll decrease it but let's just one bitcoin and let's put in that fifty thousand dollars spending remember the cost of living is also significantly cheaper let's put in that four percent inflation and now this is where things get a little bit speculative which is the annual bitcoin appreciation rate historically it's done roughly 250 percent over the last, I think it's like 10 years or five years, but is it going to do that over the next couple of years? I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't, but let's be conservative, right? Let's, uh, let's do the 38%, the 38% number or the 30% number to be, to make it even more speculative, uh, sorry, to be even more conservative. And it basically what we're saying is that we think that Bitcoin's annual appreciation, if you average it together over the next 10 years is going to be around 30%, which is, is not that crazy. Like a Kathy Woods prediction of $648,000 Bitcoin by 2030 is a lot higher than this 30%. But again, we're being conservative. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to 
you know, not inject that moon juice too soon, even though we're going to do that in a sec. Um, so what would be your moon date with one Bitcoin and you wanted to take out $50,000 a year and the inflation rate was at 4%, which is higher what it is now. And the annual appreciation of Bitcoin is only 30%. Your moon date would be May 24th, 2030. You would be, your Bitcoin stack would be worth 365k. Your first daily withdrawal would be 0. 0.000489, and it would probably be, no, it would be worth roughly 178 dollars, right? So here it is, and this is the awesome part. And you'd be like, wait a second, hold on, like, how is it like one Bitcoin is fifty six thousand dollars, and you're saying I could retire off? having one Bitcoin, I mean, versus the kind of fiat mindset, which is, you know, you got to save up 1.3 million so that you could hope to retire at age 67, right? It's a, it's, it's a totally different type of conversation. And this is what living on a Bitcoin standard is. This is what happens when you live on a deflationary mindset, right? It completely changes your outlook, right? In 2030, right? It's what, you know, six years away. It's not that long, right? It's one Bitcoin. Okay. Now let's kind of change the conversation. Let's say you like to live large and you're like, okay, you know what? I want to spend a hundred thousand dollars a year. And you know, the annual appreciation rate, your personal moon day is just three years later, 2033. But let's say you have more Bitcoin. So it's, let's say you have five Bitcoin. You're one of the few. You're one of the lucky, right? When is your moon date? Your moon date is in two years. Four, 16, 26. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is the power of Bitcoin. I'm going to put this in the live chat right now so you guys could play around with this tool because, of course, it's totally different for everybody, right? Everyone's got a different stack. But just to kind of give you guys an idea of the power of this technology, right? The tower of the power of number go up 2033 instead of waiting to the age of 67. Okay. Now let's talk about, you know, the moon juice. Let's talk about if you are a high net worth individual and you want to have that 1% income and you want to live very, very well, right? So, I'm assuming if you're a high net worth individual, you probably have at least 10 Bitcoin. All right. So let's put that there. 10 Bitcoin. And if you're a high net worth individual, the average is 650,000, which is the annual 1%, uh, you know, the 1% income in the United States. And we leave everything else the same. 4% inflation rate and annual Bitcoin appreciation of 30%. Your moon date is 2031 with 10 Bitcoin and you could be living a 1% lifestyle. Now, what's really interesting though, is that the base case of this website was 38%, right? I put it, I made it a lot more conservative, uh, not to get everyone's hopes up, but let's use the base case of the website, which is 38% annual Bitcoin appreciation rate. And let's take a look at what we were taking a look at. So let's go back to the average salary of 50,000 in the U S let's take a look at the average, let's say the stack, right? You want to get to that one Bitcoin. You want to be in the elite of 21 million people that can only ever own one Bitcoin. And, uh, your moon date would actually be before 2030. It would be 2028. At 2028, you could be taking out 50,000 a year from your one Bitcoin stack and you would have enough basically to, uh, to live forever with this annual Bitcoin appreciation rate. Now let's, let's say that your annual income is a hundred thousand. You want it to be a hundred thousand. Your moon date would be 2030. So you can move, you can move these things around. You could be a lot more aggressive. You could put in 50 right? Which a lot of people are thinking, um, you can move this, move this down back to 50,000 and your moon date is actually in 2026. So it's really, really dependent on the inflation rate. And it's really, really dependent on Bitcoin's annual, uh, annual appreciation rate. But this could help you 
plan for the future with the size of your stack, right? So it's completely dependent on you, what your situation is, but I think it's a really, really interesting tool. Now, something else to keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, is that the developed world, right? I know that most of our viewers are coming out of the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia, but I know we have a lot of other international viewers worldwide from every single continent, maybe except Antarctica, uh, but the cost of living is significantly cheaper in other countries, right? So, you know, the cost of living is very high in the United States. It's very high in the so-called, uh, you know, developed world. But if you want to live in South America, right, the average salary there is uh, about one. Th so in Costa Rica, the average salary is one thousand seventy seven dollars. Right. I know a lot of uh, I know I know a lot of Bitcoiners have uh, decided to move there. Right, so uh, let's do that. Let's actually just make it a $20,000 salary with that one Bitcoin stack, right? Uh, annual appreciation of uh, 30. And uh, let's see what the date is, 2026. So it's right around the corner. So if you don't wanna stick it out in the developed world where the cost of living is very high, uh, you can move to Central America and things are a lot cheaper in El Salvador. Right, look, $393 is the monthly income, the average monthly income. So you can definitely get a cheaper, uh, you know, a cheaper uh, living expense country. There's there's many other places than the West if you want to go down that route. I think there's a very famous family, actually, that sold everything they had and they just started traveling the world, right? So it really, really depends on your situation. Now, I do want to end it with this tab, which is priced in Bitcoin. So... You know, I've been talking about this. I've been kind of showing you guys the numbers and then I get it. If you spend a lot of time in the fiat matrix and, you know, you talk to traditional financial planners and again, how much money do you need to retire? If you search this on Google, right, it's giving you these astronomical numbers. And, and then what is that? That's depressing, right? That's really, really depressing. Like, think about that for a second, right? You need to aim for $1.3 million, Right. So like think about how difficult that is off an average salary. Right. So let's say you make fifty thousand dollars a year. Let's say you save uh, out of that fifty thousand. If you're lucky, if you're extremely disciplined, you're able to save 20 percent. That gives you ten thousand dollars. Right. So uh, how long would it take you to make one point three million dollars off ten thousand dollars? I mean, take you 130 years. So you're forced to kind of invest. You put it in the uh, in the stock market. You become a speculator because you want to make more money. When Bitcoin, it's just like buy Bitcoin, or earn Bitcoin, mine Bitcoin, put that Bitcoin to the side and it grows for you. And then you'd be like, Nico, that's too good to be true. In fact, I got a call from my suegros, my parents-in-law yesterday, and this is going to be their first bull market where they are exposed, right? You know, they've been hearing me talk about this like a maniac for the last eight years, but this is the first time that, you know, they have, they don't have their toes in, but they have their whole hand in the water, right? And they're watching this thing, you know, go up in price and they're like, holy crap. And I'm like, welcome to Bitcoin. Like it's unbelievable. And I get why it's unbelievable. If you live in the fiat matrix, this is what they're telling you. If you live in the fiat matrix, it's normal that you have to work two jobs. If you live in the fiat matrix, it's normal that you can't be able to afford rent. But under a Bitcoin standard, life gets cheaper. And this is why the bankers hate it. This is why the European Central Bank came out with that Twitter post yesterday where they are basically making the case that, you know, Bitcoin has failed and it's a speculative asset and you can't trust it and blah, 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 right? That's what they said. You heard it, right? However, if you take a look at the data, you take a look at the numbers, the numbers don't lie. They tell a very, very different story. And what do those numbers say? Those numbers say that if you've been saving in Bitcoin, the dollar has gotten 93% cheaper. On a three-year time scale, it's gotten 18% cheaper. 
on a one year time scale, it's gotten 58% cheaper. What about commodities? Well, they've gotten cheaper too. Oil, 91% cheaper. 90, natural gas, 95% cheaper. Now, I think what a lot of us think about, especially you know, if you're coming of age, if you're a millennial, you're trying to start a family, is a house. What, what if I wanna buy a house, right? Because remember when they printed, when they went on that money min printing spree, you know, they, they basically outpriced a lot of millennials out of the housing market. Well, if you've been saving in Bitcoin on a five-year scale, a housing, even, even the fact that it's doubled has gotten 84% cheaper. On a three-year scale, it's gotten 70% cheaper. On a one-year scale, it's gotten 66% cheaper. So when you live on a Bitcoin standard, things get cheaper. Therefore, all of a sudden, you now have hope for the future where before you had no hope. So I gave you guys the resource. I dropped it in the chat. I'll put it in the video description as well. And you guys could use it. Plug in your own stack. Be conservative. But use this as a tool to help you plan or potentially plan for the future, right? of how much Bitcoin do you need to retire um, and roughly at what date uh, is that going to happen? So anyways, that's my take on all this. And I, the reason I wanted to cover this is because the price is pumping. We're all very excited. The reason we're very excited is because we're getting wealthier. But I think a lot of us in the back of our minds are just like, okay, but when is that date that, you know, I can walk out the door of my nine to five. When is that date that I no longer have to do something that perhaps I don't necessarily like to do, but perhaps I have to do it in order to be able to food my, feed my family, provide for my family, right? So Bitcoin provides a light at the end of the tunnel. The traditional financial system, there is no light. That shit's dark as fuck, right? Making $1.3 million, like... It's not impossible to do, right? But it's also very, very difficult to do for most people, right? And I see someone saying high, higher calling says hope dealers. I mean, dude, you could say whatever you want, call us hope dealers and say this and say that. But I encourage you, I bet you if you've lived on a Bitcoin standard for four years, you wouldn't say it's hope. You'd say it's the truth. Like I could tell you that my life has gotten cheaper since I've I've transitioned to a Bitcoin standard. It's gonna be my third cycle. I've been in the, I've been in the space for three years. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, life gets cheaper and you get significantly wealthier. I promise you. And anyone around you that transitions to a Bitcoin standard will have the same feeling. They'll go through the same thing. And I mean, don't take my word for it. Nate, let's ask our, our guest, man. Does life get cheaper and better on a Bitcoin standard? Uh, yep. <laughs> why why the, does it? Why does it? So so here's the thing. For, for everything you just said, right? So when you're holding a money that is in demand, prices of everything else effectively, when compared to that, come down to meet, meet how valuable that money is. Um, what is really, really important though, for those considering that haven't yet got into Bitcoin is that the real price that you pay when you start is hardening your mental fortitude through a few years of just stacking and not caring about the price. If you just stack regularly over a few years and don't care about the price on the other end, you can evaluate your situation and you can see how, you know how you look. And historically, 100% of the time, you're going to look great in Bitcoin. Whether or not that changes in the future, I don't know. I don't think it's going to. I think the odds are pretty good uh, myself. And um, yeah, and, and all we could do is really like spread that message. That message is very, very important because as we might talk about later, we have extremely powerful global entities in my opinion, not really attacking Bitcoin, but attacking the mindset of individuals who might opt out of their money gulag fiat world, right? Because they don't have power anymore if you switch out of 
their control mechanism, which is the fiat money. Yeah. That's really all I got to say about that. No, I mean, it's as simple as that. And I mean, so Nate, you know, we didn't talk about this prior, uh, like, and I know a lot of people are skeptical and, and I could tell you that from, you know, my personal experience dealing with, you know, my parents and now they're full fledged, like hardcore Bitcoin maxis. Cause yep. you know, they've been, they've been holding Bitcoin since 2016, like me, but is it too good to be true? Is what I'm saying too good to be true? Because if you've lived in the fiat matrix for so long and you've been conditioned to think that money somehow needs to lose purchasing power to work and to function uh, or else society is going to burn down and somehow, you know, taking self-custody of your wealth is somehow a danger to society. Uh, what would you say? Like, is that is that yeah. wrong? Is that what's your take on that? So my question to folks that say that, right, like, you know, it's like you said, the too good to be true crowd, right? Okay. My question to that person, if I'm having a conversation with them to be is, give me a percentage of what you think, like, what are the chances in your opinion that you're wrong, that Bitcoin actually becomes a global standard monetary unit in a time frame, at any time frame, really? And it can't be zero right? 1%, half a percent, whatever. They'll usually say like, man, 1% chance. Okay. Take your investment portfolio and put 1% in. So you cover yourself, right? That's sort of like my default thing when I talk to them. And then if they do decide to go that route, usually they scoff at that. And I never talk to them again, but if they do decide to go that route, they generally end up learning about Bitcoin, which is in my opinion, you get a little bit and then you want to learn about it. That's how it was for me. You know, back when you were doing it too in 2016 and stuff, that's how it was for me. And I th I think that's how it is for most people. So that's how I sort of engage that particular thing. It's like, man, you're just throwing hopium out there. That's crazy, whatever. Okay, I might be wrong, but what percentage do you think I, I'm right? And then allocate that just to cover yourself. It's it that's and the longer Bitcoin's around, the more that um it's gonna stay around. Yeah, a hundred percent. I a hundred percent agree with that take. Anyways, Opti, I know Opti's let forgive Opti everyone. He's having some technical difficulties today with restream. I, bl I blame restream. I blame restream. Uh but what's sure. your take on this, man? You've been living on a Bitcoin standard basically as long as I have. Has life gotten cheaper? Has has uh, your hope for the future increased on a Bitcoin standard? I mean, guys, I call myself Optimus Fields for a reason. Before I started saving in Bitcoin, it was legitimately Pessimist Fields. You know, I, I was stuck in the rat race. I didn't think there was hope. I had no money. I, I didn't have good money habits. And then for some reason, when I found Bitcoin, it made it so much easier to save and and retain my value like legitimately guys i couldn't save like 300 dollars in cash like anytime i had cash i would instantly spend it and then for some reason once it got into bitcoin i just realized you know the hodl meme took over and i just it's like the black hole of value for me i just throw it in there i don't touch it i don't want to touch it and as you see over I don't know. I, I got it in 2017, the end of 2017. And, you know, my, the, it, the number has gone up since 2017. And then on the point of like retirement, and I know this might be a contrarian take, but I kind of think that like retirement is a scam in general. Like, I, I don't think you should be retiring. Like, I know you don't want to be working at a job that you hate. And so, of course, there's that dream of like, you want to retire, you know, go go off into the sunset, stop working that shitty fiat job that you hate. But I, I fundamentally you know, like the idea of working on something for as long as I can and try to be as productive as possible for as long as I can. And of course, there is thoughts about the, you know, when I'm old, like 80 or 90, that like, yeah, I, I don't want to be working just to survive. But as we've shown, and as anyone that understands what's going on with Bitcoin, or rather anyone that's hodled for more than a few years knows that your life gets cheaper on a Bitcoin standard. You know, I was thinking about this last night, you know, I was, I was kind of trolling on Twitter, the prices pumped like, what, like 10% yesterday or, you know, 6K candle, everyone's freaking out. And I was just thinking like, man, it's such a trip. All my friends on the internet, all my Bitcoin friends right now, their net worth has just increased. Like we are, all of our networks are increasing as the price goes up. And so I fundamentally believe that if anyone out there is where I was seven years ago, where you're just like, man, I 
There's no escape. I, I can't make it out of the rat race. I, I can't get off the hamster wheel. Like there is some basic money principles, some basic money habits that you will have to learn. And that's basically like you're going to have to save some of your value. Pay yourself first. Make sure that you are retaining some of the cash that's coming in and you need to find a way to park it. And of course, we believe it's Bitcoin. Number is going to go up this year into next year. And will we see another, you know, blow off top and another 70, 80 percent drawdown? Maybe. I don't know. But all I know is that if you hold on to the Bitcoin that you own today and that you will continue to stack, because I really don't think there is a time where I won't stack and save in Bitcoin. Like, what am I going to do? Save dollars? Like, that makes no sense to me. So if you just hold on long enough, like your life is going to improve. And and I felt this personally. I know Nico's felt it. I know, I know Nate's felt it. I know all my friends have all felt the same thing that as you save in Bitcoin, like the stress of the fiat life starts to, you know, it starts to roll off your back and you're like, wow, okay. Oh, I can actually divert my energy and my labor into things that I like and start building a life that I want to live and do for the rest of my life. And this is what we're doing here at Simply Bitcoin is just like, all right, we love talking about Bitcoin. Let's create the best Bitcoin media company we can on a Bitcoin standard, holding Bitcoin on our personal balance sheets and life is going to get better. And we have a longer runway every four years because the price goes up. And it's just very simple, guys. Saving Bitcoin, it, the number is going to go up. You guys can call us hopium dealers all you want. But hey, the last 15 years, I don't even know what the percentage number is. It's like a million I mean, percent that not, the price has gone but, up. But it's like, but like, we're not speculating on the number. Like, it just, we're not speculating. Like, guys, the I put the link in the video description and then I put it in the live chat. And you could literally plug in whatever your situation is. You could plug it into that calculator and, you know, you can have fun with it and it will help you kind of financially plan to uh, what you're trying to do. But I, like we even took the conservative, like if it was up to me, I would put a 50 percent annual appreciation rate in Bitcoin. Like that's what I would put. Wait, do 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 just like a play around version of that, Nico. Do something like crazy numbers with I like just, very I, high I inflation I rates. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to like, <laughs> I don't want to like, you know. dude. Twenty percent inflation rate, like, yeah. I mean, so let's stick with the one, right? Let's stick with the one. Let's stick with the average salary in the U.S. fifty thousand. Uh, dude, twenty percent inflation rate, inflation. maybe twenty five percent inflation rate. I don't know what's the inflation rate right now. It's three percent. Uh, well, that's going to uh, suck because you're yeah, going to be like, it's 2100. <laughs> so yeah, Forever. I mean, but again, like if, if that's the inflation rate, you better be, you can, you can be what? sure that the annual Bitcoin appreciation rate is going to be a lot higher than 30% as people flee the U S dollar. Right. Um, which is what do do last year's annual. What was it? Uh, 150% or something like that. Do 20%. Inflation, inflation rate, rate for it the like, for, it, no twenty percent for USD and then last year never, we had what was, like a hundred. It was never twenty percent, dude. It was, I know, it was like but 8%. I'm just saying it was eight like, percent last year. Okay, ten yeah. percent. So okay, so let's put ten percent. So your moon date would be twenty thirty four. If you have yeah, one but Bitcoin. and then and then move the annual Bitcoin appreciation to like one fifty. That's what we got last year. Obviously, it's not going to be every year, but then your moon date is. Let's go. <laughs> Your moon date already. Ha uh, your moon date. Is your moon date is next the month. end of this month. Yeah, next month. <laughs> next month is your moon date. So with an annual appreciation of 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 150. But I mean, look, I think the 38 is is completely you know conservative, and I think it's you know it's it's good. Personally, I would put it to 50. Right. Uh, that kind of changes things. It moves you know moves things a little bit faster. And again, it's really dependent on your stack. Right. So you know. Some people have 10 coins. Some people have 21 coins. Some people have 100 coins, right? If you have 100 coins, you know, your moon date already happened, right? If you have 75 coins, your moon date already happened. Uh, let's say you want to live large, right? You know, you want to live uh, with the top 1% kind of lifestyle. Your moon date still already happened, right? So, you know, with an appreciation rate of 50, right? What about... You know, of 38, it already happened. What about 30? It still already happened. So, you know, it really kind of depends on your stack. 
you know, and that's why this calculator is so powerful. It's such an interesting tool. Anyways, uh, I do want to move on to the culture to talk to Nate about uh, voltage. But before we do that, I do want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors, uh, Kaboom Racks. They're the most trusted place to buy, sell, and host mining equipment. You could scan the QR code on your screen right now, or you could check the link in the video description. It will take you directly to their Telegram marketplace where you can check out their inventory and connect with the member of their sales team. They make purchasing Bitcoin mining ASICs easy and transparent, and you could also sell your mining equipment with them. You could access their vast network of domestic and international customers when you sell your mining equipment with Kaboom Racks. What are you waiting for? Check out their racks today. Again, scan the QR code or check the link in the video description. All right, everybody, let's get to the culture. We have a lot to talk about. The Daily Culture. All right, guys, we have 10 million people to Orange Pill. That's why you guys got to get yourself a copy of Bitcoin Evangelism uh, it, because it's an absolute beast of a resource for orange pilling no coiners and alt coiners alike. This is a book for Bitcoiners who know Bitcoin but have a hard time explaining it to their friends. It's a book for Bitcoiners who are trying to explain Bitcoin only to alt coiners. It's available on Amazon. And what you could do is you could scan the QR code on your screen or you could check the link in the video description. Guys, check out Bitcoin Evangelism Planting Seeds for a Decentralized Revolution by Bryant DeMint. Anyways, everybody, let's talk Nathan. So Nathan, uh, so talk to us a little bit about voltage, where you work at. Wait, 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 no, 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 Nico, before we go I'm to voltage, before we go to voltage. I'm hijacking it because your video is fucked up, dude. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then I just, old, I just want to ask Nate one question because he does have some contrarian lightning takes and he's, really? he's been working really? in lightning for a while. Uh, so Nate, what is just your general view on lightning since you've been in lightning for so long? Uh, I've never been more bullish, honestly. Um, gosh, I don't know what to say. Yeah, when when Lightning came out, it was magical, and it's still magical today. I wake up every day just completely amazed by it, and I I think that a lot of the surface level discussion and is is can sometimes be uninformed. Uh, the Lightning Network as it sits today is not all that it will ever be. Just like when Bitcoin Core 1.0, not 1.0, but 0. Dot whatever it was, came out, it was not all it was ever going to be. We've got amazing innovations happening on Lightning, uh, but it takes time. Uh, you know, examples are things like the the Bolt 12 invoice uh, specification, or splicing, or dual funded channels, or trampoline routing. All this stuff that is going to in the future increase privacy increase throughput uh reduce cost etc is on its way and and uh things that make lightning easier to use is also on its way so i've never been more bullish i think it's a great time to start a lightning node and i think um if any bitcoiner wants to start a lightning node they should not be afraid to do so it is not as hard as people think Love it. Now let's go into voltage because that's the perfect segue there. So what is voltage? What are you working on? And uh, why should someone look at voltage? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. I, uh, so voltage is a Bitcoin development platform in the cloud and the concept of it, um, you know, voltage has been around for a few years now and we've been striving to build a platform in which those that have the, um, desire to incorporate lightning into their business in any way, whether any kind of business um, can do so easily without having to manage their own server, their own software, their own updates, and, and even, you know, and, and reduce the cost of hiring people to do that sort of thing. So instead, they can come to Voltage uh, and get their infrastructure set up that is completely encrypted client side meaning we don't see what you're doing on there at all, meaning we're no KYC. And you can have access to the entire LND API, which uh, is exactly what you would have if you were running the Lightning Node on your own server. We are not um, one of, you know, we're all Bitcoiners at Voltage and the core ethos that we have and stick to is that no walled gardens. If you want to come to Voltage and try us out and move off of Voltage, cool, whatever. Um, but we want to be, uh, you know, ethically aligned with Bitcoin. 
which I, th- I believe we are. If we weren't, I don't believe I would work there <laughs> for what that's worth. And I, uh, and yeah, so, and, and today is a very, very, very important day, actually, Opti, because you invited me on on a day where we are actually launching. We're in the middle of a maintenance period right now where we are essentially relaunching our entire user interface to be more simple, more easy to access, and, and also new features. Uh, for example, with this update, if you are working with a couple other people or a whole team, you can now give access to other people to your uh, infrastructure. So for example, if you're running a business and you want to grant read only permission to your accountant, now you can do that and all, um, or, you know, those kind of things. Uh, so we're trying really, really hard to focus on businesses and enterprises. That's not to say that a, someone who runs a, a pizza shop or a bowling alley can't come to voltage and get a BTC pay server. BTC pay server comes with every package on voltage. And with this new, uh, setup, our, our lowest, Package option is twenty five dollars a month with a BTC Pay server and a Lightning node, uh, which which is pretty good in, in my opinion. So yeah, uh, Voltage Cloud is the site. We are working really really hard to make Lightning easy for for businesses and developers, and Bitcoin in general. Honestly, if you want a Bitcoin Core node, we could do that too. So definitely look us up. Love it. Okay, well, who's uh, you kind of mentioned it, Nate? But who is the ideal customer for Voltage in your opinion? Yeah, it's it, it's kind of a little bit of a range, but we're definitely targeting businesses and enterprises. For example, we are working with the Brains Mining Pool, and they announced that they are doing lightning payouts. So I guess the S9 will never die uh, because you can run an S9 and get paid out every day via lightning now from, from Brains Pool, and they are using Voltage for their infrastructure. Uh, so that's just like one example. Um, but we have folks that use us um, for, for simple things. I've worked with a guy recently who... Um, he owns a couple small businesses in his small town. Like he owns the bowling alley and the pizza place and stuff. And he uses voltage and accepts Bitcoin at these places. Uh, so you could go as far down as that. You can use voltage to paywall your, your blog site or something. If you want to, um, you know, charge per article and stuff like that. So you can get very, very creative with, with the voltage infrastructure, the same way you could get creative with using these, uh, software and tools if, on your own server. Like we don't block, um, any, any, anything as if you were running it on your own infrastructure. Yeah. So, and, and another thing that I wanted to ask you, man, is that like right now in we were I think we were talking about this a little bit, like in the beginning of the show, perhaps off air, which is lightning is not easy right now, right? Uh, it's not easy for retail. It's not easy for a business to, you know, just, uh, set up a, uh, you know, BTC pay server. It's very easy to set it up for on chain. Yeah. Somewhat easy, but yeah. For Lightning, it's not easy, like managing channels, you know, yep. opening channels, closing channels. And if we really want Bitcoin to scale and we're bullish on the second layer, you know, we have a lot of work to do. And, you know, you guys are the vanguard of this at Voltage. Uh, you guys are definitely trying to solve this problem as a company. So uh, what's an update on that? Like, you sure. know, what would you recommend if someone just wanted to use lightning. Like I had to jump through so many hoops, uh, you know, before it was like download wallet of Satoshi, bada bing, bada boom, bam, 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 set up. Now, you know, it's like get all B is great. Uh, primal is good, but it's not a one-stop shop. It's not like, let me open my app store and download this wallet and I'm ready to receive lightning transactions. You have to jump through some hoops and anyone who's like not technically inclined or first exposure to Bitcoin, it's kind of a turnoff a little bit. I remember when we set up the lightning, we tried to set up a lightning store, like a lightning, you know, backend to receive tips for simply Bitcoin. And we just defaulted to, okay, you know what? Like F that, like, let's just use, you know, wall of Satoshi or get Albi or whatever, because it's not like that we can't learn how to do it. It's that we got a lot of stuff to do as content creators. Uh, We just want a plug and play solution. So, uh, where's that at? And is there something that Voltage offers that makes it plug and play? Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think that this um, issue that is being tackled is, is the is there's two different angles to it, right? Folks that want to receive lightning, folks that want to spend lightning and maybe maybe receive a little bit. And, and Voltage is really more focused on the receiving end of this stuff. Uh, so that is 
more difficult traditionally because you need what's called inbound liquidity on your channels in order to receive, which means somebody else needs to basically lock up their capital with you so you can receive. And at Voltage, we uh, we do have a automatic liquidity provision service. Um, every new node gets a channel from us so you can receive immediately. And also we are building uh, partnerships with, uh, for example, the amboss.space, um, they call it the magma, where folks are essentially selling channels. We are looking at, we're, we're really far down the line. I mean, this is going to happen of integrating that with our platform in a automatic way. And we also have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> uh, we also have a uh, analytics tool that's really easy to use that's built into the platform called Surge, which kind of alerts you to, hey, you need to get another channel or whatever. So I don't think the babysitting is completely going to go away, but I think making it manageable, and in my opinion, manageable would be like maybe you logging in 10 minutes a week or something to to do what you have to do, whether it is to send your tips somewhere else to your cold storage or something like that. Um, that's that's the goal. And I think we're reaching that as far as just like a general user spending and stuff. I think Phoenix, Zeus and Mutiny are going to be the the three big players in just the general user spending uh, applications. But that's not something that we're actually focused on at Voltage too much. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, man. Well, so if they wait, want- I got a, uh, I got a question. One, one more. Sorry, Nika, not to cut you off. Uh, how quick is the onboarding, Nate? If people wanted to set up like a BTC pay server, uh, a BTC pay server, I can get you set up with a BTC pay server, a Lightning node, inbound liquidity in probably thirty minutes. Wow. If we go, and then that's fairly quick. I would say thirty to forty-five got- minutes. And that's something yeah. that you you walk, you handhold someone through, or is that someone that yep. you guys set up on your end? No. Uh, so uh, generally when we do those onboardings, uh, in, in that specific case, so um, for example, Voltage partners with the Human Rights Foundation. So sometimes I help NGOs set up their Voltage infrastructure, and it generally takes about 45 minutes. Most of them know something about Bitcoin and Lightning, but maybe not everything. And generally what happens is they will screen share, and I'll just walk them through signing up click create node, click, give me a channel. We make this very, very easy. Start up your BTC pay server. We have the BTC, pay, when, if you're already running a lightning node on voltage or BTC pay server, uh, BTC pay server links up automatically. You don't have to do any weird configurations or anything. We detect it, it links up, you log into your BTC pay and then you could create your donation buttons and, and stuff like that uh, right away. Gotcha, man, that's, that's incredibly badass. Very, very cool. And uh, yeah, man, it's uh, all the power to you. It's incredibly important what you guys are doing over at Voltage. And uh, you guys are making Lightning easy for institutions, enterprises, uh, individuals. And that's something that we definitely need if we want hyper-Bitcoinization, right? We, we need those second layer solutions. As Bitcoin continues to go up, the fees will go up with it. Block space will become incredibly more scarce. Uh, so we need those second layer solutions and lightning is definitely one of those. And I'm, I'm super happy that you guys are focusing on that and you guys are innovating and you guys are uh, making it easy for the average everyday individual to uh, use something like the lightning network. So uh, it's always an honor, Nate, to uh, for to, to have you on the show. I think last time I saw you in person was at BitBlock Boom. It was great to see you downstairs in the lobby. Love that conference and uh, hope uh, to cross paths with you soon in the Bitcoin verse. And uh, thank you for coming on, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. I love talking about this stuff. Bitcoin is my life and I'm there's no day I wake up where like I want to change anything like things are exactly where they should be. And as far as lightning and voltage and stuff goes, like I just want to just spend like two seconds just to say, folks, if you understand Bitcoin on chain, you understand how private keys work, you understand all that. Try running a lightning node. It doesn't have to be on voltage. Try running a lightning node, though. Uh, there's tons of resources out there, and I think it's very, very rewarding to use your own infrastructure. If you're inclined to do something like that, I, I say that give it a shot. If it's not for you, it's not for you, but at least give it a shot, and you never know. It, it might be. So with that said, thank you so much for having me, Nico. 
and thanks Zopti. For, <laughs> th- thanks for coming on, man. Honors are honors ours. Anyways, uh, uh, if you want to follow uh, Nate, you can follow him at B for Bacon on Twitter and check out Voltage dot cloud. Also, uh, Nate did bring up nodes. If you guys want to get your own node, uh, I recommend the Start Nine. That's the one that I personally use as my daily driver. The Start Nine Server Pure. Uh, you can use promo code Simply to get nine percent off anything on the Start Nine uh, store. Uh, it's the best nodes in the business. I'm not just saying that, but like literally, guys, get yourself a Start Nine. It's night and day uh, versus everything else. I highly, highly recommend it. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that was our show. If you enjoyed the show, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Consider subscribing if you feel like we provided you value. But the number one thing you could do to help push the peaceful Bitcoin revolution is share this content. In fact, share Bitcoin culture, share Bitcoin music, share Bitcoin everything. Uh, Go to conferences, get involved, take action, take agency. It's an election year. The number one thing you could do, your vote matters. Take your Bitcoin into self-custody. That's how we really change these things. Love you all. I'm completely sleep deprived, but I will see you tomorrow for another episode of Simply Bitcoin Live, Bitcoin or slavery. Uh, As a new father, guys, um, you know, it really kind of dawned on me uh, how important it is what we're doing right now. Uh, and I'm going to pass that question to all you guys. What type of future do you want to live? Do you want to, uh, do you, what type of future do you want your children to live in? What type of future do you want your children's children to live in? Do you want them to live in a future of slavery? Because that's what CBDCs and fiat money is. Or do you want them to live in a, in a future of freedom, peace, and prosperity? Because that is exactly what Bitcoin represents. What team are you on? Are you on team orange or are you on team green? See you guys tomorrow for a brand new episode of Simply Bitcoin Live. Episode was brought to you by bitcoinwell.com, a Bitcoin only platform on a mission to enable financial independence.